I actually had just the um, idea because you were so nicely pointing out some of the neurological facts. For example, he said um, the mass, the whole uh, people, bunch of people, yes? Yeah. And uh, activating this uh, herd thinking. And what is interesting is that when we follow our herd thinking, we actually follow our brain, which is evolutionary, belonging to, um, <coughs> I will say lower species, but I, 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 I mean... The monkeys would not like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, but when we follow the herd mentality, then we actually act like the two-year-old children. Be why? Because in two-year children, their frontal lobes are not developed yet, or at least they are not very well developed, they are not very well wired. Their myelin is not there. And you know that the mass, the volume and the mass of the frontal lobe is going to increase into late 20s. There are some people who are late myelinizators and they get their myelin in frontal lobes only when they are 25 or 30. And these are usually people who have problems with adapting to the normal adult life. They like to lead the life like the teenagers, despite the fact that they are 10 or almost 15 years older. So to expect from the two years old that he takes the responsibility of himself is completely nonsense because he's not able to. It's like teaching someone to use the right hand while he doesn't have the right hand. So to say this is where the adults are so important because we do have our frontal lobes fully developed, fully myelinizated. And we can make some good decisions. <coughs> and especially these are the decisions which are concerned with ethical principles, with moral principles, with uh, our social interactions. And um, this is why this interplay with children is also so important because we can provide for children some of the functions that they are not able to have them yet. But they will develop them if we treat them in the right way. Yes. Maybe also if we talk about the teenagers, I think teenagers are also very, very interesting group because um, there are two periods of time in two years old where the volume of the brain is almost the volume of the adult as well as the number of synapses is so much increased and the period during the teenagers where their myelin is increasing and their frontal lobes are developing and you know that these are the groups the adults find difficult to work with because at two years old, they are stubborn, they learn how to say no, and they exercise no on you, and you don't like it, of course. <laughs> and when they are teenagers, <coughs> they exercise their frontal lobes as well by rebelling to you. It looks like they are rebellions. It's the way how they train their brain to be fully functional when they are 30 and more. But they need this training polygon to say. And usually the parents are the closest to be used. <laughs> so um, I think maybe if you can tell us something about the teenagers because it's really interesting how this interplay with the, the, their brain development and their mm. social interaction really matches. <coughs> 